ourselves in the word and the knowledge of God so that we can be ready for, for, for the coming of the, uh, the groom. Hallelujah. Okay, so today I'm moving from there. I'm going to move to uh, part two of it. I've laid the foundation, though it is not depth of what I taught last week, but at least I've laid the foundation. That gives you um, at least a knowledge of where we are going. Okay, this evening, I want us to look at the book of Luke 1 and 45. So quickly get your iPad, your notepad, get ready to take note, get ready to write something down and go back to it later. And blessed is he, and blessed is she that believe for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. I go back again. And blessed is she that believe for there shall be a performance of those things which we are told are from the Lord. You see, you may not receive, uh, you may not receive a rema word from God, but we have the logos. The logos is the Bible. You may not receive a direct word from God, but at least you have the Bible. For Mary, Mary received a direct word for, from God, uh, from the angel of God, saying that she will conceive and she will deliver a baby. Aha, uh -huh. she will conceive and she will deliver a baby. Again, I said, you may not receive a direct word like that, that somebody will give it to you. But anytime you pick up your Bible, you get revelation as God gives you understanding as you are studying. Spiritual study of the word and practice help your faith to be anchored. I go back again. Spiritual study of the word and practice help your faith to be anchored. So we are not just studying the word of God. You are also practicing what you are reading. When you, when you read the word of God, you do what? You practice it. You put it in practice. That helps your faith. You see, when there is performance of the word of God in your life, when God says something concerning you, and you are able to see that result, that is the performance. Once you see that result, you know, it increases your faith to another level. Whatever word that you receive, and you see the manifestation of that word coming to pass in your life, it helps your faith to be anchored. In the case of Mary, Mary said, "Bless is she, uh, Mary said, let it be unto me according to your word, according to your word. Then the angel also replied Mary, and he said, blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which we are told her from the Lord. He said, that's the angel now speaking to Mary. All Mary said is, let it be unto me according to your word. So as, as a child of God, you need to believe the word of God that according to the reading, according to the written word of God, so let it be to me. And I'm saying tonight, you must practice that. So you don't just read. You don't just read the word of God from page to page and you said, okay, that's fine. No, begin to practice what the word of God says in order for you to experience the manifestation of the word of God. And when you receive manifestation to your prayer, your faith is anchored. Your faith grows. Your faith becomes solid. Your faith becomes strong because you have seen what the word of God has done to you or for you or for your children. So that grows your faith. That helps you to do what? It helps you to stand strong in, the, in, in God. Again, your study and obedience to the word of God is what gives credibility to your faith. I go back again, your study and obedience. So I've added another thing to this. Your study, what I've added to this now is obedient to the word of God. It gives credibility to your faith. You know, at times people study the word of God, but they don't obey the word of God. I go back again, people study the word of God, people read. They read a lot. They read the word of God, but some 
don't believe what they are reading. Some don't obey what they are reading. Our faith is not just that God exists. Your obedience is what proves your belief. I go back again. I say your faith is not just that God exists. Your obedience is what proof. Your obedience is the proof of your belief. I want to say that again. I say your obedience is the proof of your belief. What is the point if I study? What is the point if I read my Bible and I fail to obey the word of God? So your obedience is the proof of your belief. I go back again and I want that to sink deep into your spirit. I said, your obedience is the proof of your belief. Your obedience, either obeying in little things, obeying in bigger things, obeying in greater things, as you obey that word is the proof that you believe. If you don't obey what the word of God says, haha, then you can't have the proof. But when you are obeying what the word of God says, there will be proof, many proof that you'll be able to stand and say to people that this is what the word of God has done, uh, has done for me. This is what I've seen as a result of studying the word of God and holding on to the word of God. Shout hallelujah. Our faith is not just that God exists. Again, it's a, the proof of your obedience. Your, the proof of your obedience. If I may ask this evening, do you believe what you study? Do you believe what you are hearing? Do you believe the messages that are coming again and again? Do you believe this word or you are just hearing it? And when is the time of uh, to act? Are you really acting according to the word of faith that you are hearing on a daily basis? Shout hallelujah. Your heart of belief in the word commits God to bring performance to his word. I go back again. Your heart of belief in the word of God that you have received commits God to do what? To perform. When you believe that word and you are acting according to what you believe, God is committed. I repeat again. God is committed to bring performance to his word. When you hold on to the word of God, and you are acting in faith. You are moving in faith. What you are doing, you are just saying, I just know that God cannot fail me. Remember, I used an example last week. A woman that, you know, the daughter was at the point of death. And this woman went to the hospital. And the doctors asked her to go back home. And they said to her, this uh, the child was going to die. Remember, I said that on Monday. Sorry, I always say last week. And he said, the child is going to die. And this woman, you know, held on to the word of God. Even when the Holy Spirit was asking, will you still stab me if that guy, if that uh, child died? This woman held on to the word of God. And he was able to use the word of God that you, I know that you are faithful. And you have said in your word that whatsoever we ask, that is our desire, you will do it. So she held on to the word of God. She did not, she did not give up easily on the world. What did I say? She did not give up easily on the world. When they asked her to go home and said, we are going to call you back in her heart of her. She's trusting God. She's still believing God that God is going to do it. Your heart of belief in the world <laughs> commits God to bring performance to his word. You know, at times we don't hold on to the word of God enough. I want to say that again. We don't hold on to the word of God enough. We know it. And what I've been teaching for some time, don't have the head knowledge of the word of God. If you have the head knowledge, there will not be performance. Your act of belief is what commits God to bring performance to what he has said concerning your life. Shout hallelujah. For example, God says, none shall lack is me. When you hold on to that word of God and say the word of God says, none shall lack a mate. And you, are, you see that things are not even working in the direction that you are believing God for. But you hold on to the word and you are acting at the same time. You are ready for what God, what the word of God says. God is also committed to do whatever that he has said concerning his word, concerning your life. Praise the Lord. I want to use an example. When you ask, when you say something to your child, you see your child is what he, he holds on to the word. Your child holds on to the word. And because they hold on to the word, they will keep reminding you. They will come to you again and again. And they will say to you, mommy, do you remember? You said you are going to buy me McDonald's. Mommy, do you remember? You said you are going 
going to buy me McDonald's. If you say to them, you see, we are not going out. Anytime we go out, they won't trouble you again. They are waiting for the time that you go out. And once you go out and they are with you, they will do what? They will remind you again. So your act of belief, the belief that you are setting and you are going to, you know, you are committed to your word in order to deliver. So they will remind you again. Mommy, do you know, you said you are going to buy us McDonald's and now we are out. We have not been out since and now finally we are out. Even if you don't have the money, something inside of you, you know, you will say to them, I'm going to buy it and you will buy it. So your act of belief, in the world, commit God to bring performance of his word. The heart of belief of your children, they believe in you. Whatever you say, they believe. If you say to them, you are going to buy them car, they believe it. And they are waiting for the time. So they keep reminding you. They keep reminding you. When they see any car that is passing, uh, that is going by, or they see any of their mates that have a car, they will remind you that, mommy, you said you are going to buy me a car. Uh, or maybe you, 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 maybe you give, like, for example, you say to them, if you pass your exam, they will say to you, now I've passed my exam. It's now for you to be committed to bring to pass what you as a mom as a, or a dad have said. It's the same thing with God. I just use that illustration in order for to help you that your act of belief in the world commit God also to do whatever. So don't just read the word of God and have knowledge of the word of God. You need understanding. You need to believe it. You need to begin to act on the word of God that you are hearing. Don't just hear it. When you hear it, I want you to begin to do what? Begin to act on what the word of God says. Mary said, let it be unto me according to your word. Let it be unto me. That is, whatever the word of God says, I'm ready. I am ready. I am ready for the performance of the word of God. As we obey the word, our faith in the word calls on unimaginable things to happen in our life. So obey the word. I say, I go back again. As we obey the word of God, our faith in the world consists on imaginable things to happen. I go back again. Remember, the word of God is God. I go back again. The word I'm speaking now is me. The word of God is what is God. So whatever the word of God says, I go back again because I want you to get understanding. Whatever the word of God says, as long as you obey what the word of God says, uh -huh, unimaginable things will begin to happen in your life as you obey it. As you obey it, whatever the word says, do it. Exactly what Mary said. He said, let it be unto me. Let it be unto me according to your word. So when you are reading the word of God, whatever the word of God says, that means your, uh, your, your, your request, you must get to the place that you agree with the word of God. You must get to the place that your spirit, your spirit, you know, take that word, take it. Don't look at it that this word was not personally given to me. It's just in the scripture. No, go beyond that. Hold on to the word of God. The, your name will, will not be there, but know that that is the word of God for you as a child of God. And as you obey the word and you act in faith, unimaginable things begin to happen in your life. I've said this many times. You find out that there is difference between, let's say, for example, the, the, the American uh, Christians and the African Christians. The American Christian, I say this every time, the American Christian, the British Christian, those that are rooted in, in Christ, you find out that there's one thing that is common among them. They don't pray so much as we pray. They don't pray. You may say that they, may, they don't have a lot of battles as we have. Yes, it is true. But one thing that is the difference between us is this. They hold on to the word of God. They hold on to the word of God. They look for scripture continuously. They begin to confess what that word says. If the Bible says, if what the Bible says is, let the sick say, I am healed. They begin to say it and they begin to act it. They begin to say it 
and they begin to act it. You may look at them and say, you can't pray the way you pray, the way we pray. They don't fast the way we fast. Yes, they don't fast the way we fast. All they do, they hold them to the word of God. They hold them to the word of God. They begin to confess it. They begin to act it. They begin to confess it. They begin to act it. That acting part is imaginary the word of God or visualizing the word of God. So continuously, they begin to visualize what they are saying as they are confessing it. And after a while, because that is their confession. You know, confession will always bring possession. So as they begin to confess the word, as they begin to confess the word, that word begins to transform. If it's their healing, it begins to work from inside outside. I go back again, the word begins to do what? The word begins to work from inside outside. As they are confessing it one day, maybe they're on which you find out that they stand up and they begin to walk. We must get to that place. The real thing when it comes to Christianity, when it comes to our belief, is the word. What did I say? Is the word. What did I say? Is the word. If the word is taken, W-O-R-D, if it's taken out of Christianity, which is the scripture, then we are, we are nothing. Praise the Lord. Because the word that you have, which is the word of God, that is our constitution. You hear me saying it again and again. Number two, the scripture that you have in your hand, that is the word of God to you. You know, when a man is about to die, a lot, in the holding days, a lot of the people don't do it now. They don't even bother. They don't worry if their father is going. That is not their problem. When a man is about to die, those days, he will gather his children and he will begin to bless them. You know, he will begin to bless them one by one. He will say things that he wants them to do. One of the things that is common, he will speak about their unity. He will also bless them. He will say a lot of things. Papa may have died for 20 years, but the people will hold on tight to the world. They will hold on tight to the world. They will believe the world. If anybody wants to cause any nuisance, they will say, do you remember? When Papa was about to die, Papa said this, Papa said that, Papa said this, Papa said that. And that person immediately will caution him or herself. That person will be afraid because that word is still living. Again, we have something that is greater than the world, than, than the world of our forefathers, than the world of our grandparents. We have a constitution that has been given to us as children of the kingdom of God, that we need to take what is in there and we begin to act. We need to begin to demand what is us as the children of God. So when you are praying, you search what is in the scripture. If it's, in, if it's not in the scripture, don't pray it. Because if you pray it, you are wasting your time. If it's in the scripture, it's like you placing a demand on what he said already. And now you are making your request and saying, you said this, like the illustration that I gave about you saying to your child, I'm gonna buy you McDonald's when we go out. And when you go out, your child heart is already ready, ready to receive that which you have promised. So they are looking everywhere. I remember when our children were, were growing up, their father will say, I'm gonna buy you McDonald's. So they are looking, they will be tapping each other and say, don't forget. So while they are driving and once they are getting close, you know, McDonald's will put their sign even before about five minutes to where they are. So they will begin to say, they'll begin to sing old McDonald's. They'll begin to sing the song of old McDonald's. Even before they, say, they talk, they have told you that McDonald's is very close. McDonald's, we will soon get to a McDonald's. Are you getting my word? That is the same thing with the word of God. I say it again. That is the same thing in the word of God. Mary said, I believe your word. I believe your word. I believe your word. So let it be to me according to your word. Praise the Lord. So the power of the word that Mary believed strengthens the womb of Mary to conceive. Are you getting that? The power of the word that Mary believed does what? Strengthen our womb to conceive, just believing the word. 
turn things around. It's the same thing when you believe the word of God that I cannot lie, I cannot die, I will live, you will live. Until you are satisfied, the devil has no right to kill you before your time. Am I saying something? The devil has no right to kill you before your time. If your confession is always, I will not die but live. I will see my children, children, and you are confessing it, and you are believing it, and you are acting it. There is no demon. There is nothing that kills people in your family that has the right to take your life. All you need to do is hold on to what you believe and begin to act it. Am I talking to somebody? If you are believing for a husband, hold on to the word of God. It says, no shall lack their mate. Aha. Uh -huh. And you begin to say to God, everything that you created is two by two. You create male and a female. I'm a male, I'm looking for my, I'm, I'm looking for my female. Wherever my part is, my other part, let him come to locate me. And you are standing on the word of God. And listen, as you are standing on the word of God and you are believing, unimaginable things will begin to happen. Because the more you are confessing it, the more you are declaring it in the realm of the spirit. What am I saying? In the realm of the spirit, the power of God is at work and is working on your behalf. It's working on your behalf. Instead of you to sit down and all you want to do is to cry. Crying cannot do the job. Am I talking? Or when you are crying, the devil will also and say, yes, yes, yes. That's what I want. I want her to be crying. May you not have any reason to cry in the name of Jesus. This word must encourage us. This word must punish us. This word must get us to that place where we are able to stand in our faith and defend the word of God. Shout hallelujah. So as a child of God, you build your faith in the world. What did I say? Build your faith in the world for you to receive answers to your prayer. Build your faith in the world. Remember, I used the illustration on Monday and I said, there's a young girl that was healed and every time she would come to church and she would walk in the church office and when it's time she has to take her medication three times. The medication that she's taking is no medication that is prescribed by any doctor. It's the medicator, medication of the word of God. She will hold the piece in her hand and it's like she's holding for and she has to take, you know, some of the medication at times, People have to take four at a time. People have to take about six at a time. But for her, she was taking four at a time. She will hold it in one hand. She will hold water in another hand. And she will say, yes, this is the medication. I'm taking this. And she'll begin to speak the scripture. <laughs> this is not them say. This is what I have seen. And it's not her alone. And she will take the water. She will use it to, you know, to, to, to use it to push down the medication. There is nothing there but by faith. What did I say? By faith. She was acting by faith. And God has to honor his word because God is committed to honoring his word. I say, I say it again. I say our God is committed in honoring his word. His word. So whatever the word of God says concerning you, God has to honor it. He has to bring it into performance. Remember, obey the word of God, ask according to the word of God, and believe it. Number one is for you to believe. Number two is for you to act. You act it. You act it. Begin to act it. Be obedient to it. Even when people look at you and they look at you and say to you, "Are you? I, I, I'm not think. I don't think you're in your right mind." Say to them, "I'm in my right mind." Very soon. You will see that I am in my right mind because you are coming to testify with me. Do you know those are the things that God honor? God wants to honor our faith. Praise the Lord, somebody. God is able to perform whatever that he says. What did I say? God is able to perform whatever that he says in his word. Those words are not just there. I was reading the scripture yesterday. and no, it's this morning. And I find some truth. And I said, wow. Then I go on the page again and say, who put this there? It's been there, but I've not been able to see it. And I've been reading it for ages. Am I talking to somebody? So when you see the scripture and you hold on to it, and you are putting it back to him, 
that this is what you say in your word. He will perform because he is committed to his word. Remember the scripture says, heaven and earth will pass away, but his word that he has spoken will not pass away without being accomplished, without fulfillment. Today, believers, we are seeing little miracle. We are seeing little demonstration of the power of God. Why is it that we are experiencing little miracle? Why is it that we are experiencing little demonstration of the power of God? I want to say this, people no longer believe the word. They want miracle, but they don't want to hold on to the word. People want instant miracle. Right now, as I'm speaking, people, you see, people will gather in the place where they see somebody is doing something, somebody with their physical eyes and they can see, that will make them to believe. And everybody, that's why the world today is deceived. We have an itchy here. We have an itchy here. We want to hear that miracle is being performed in that place. Dead body, even if it's not real, dead bodies are waking up. Things are what this are happening, that is happening, even if it's arranged. We just want to be there. We are too gullible. So we stay there. We are watching, and you are online and you have wasted time. Some will stay in the line like that three years, they waste that time, then they will hear again. There's miracle somewhere, there's miracle somewhere, they are running. There's miracle somewhere, there's miracle somewhere, then they are running. Stay where God has placed you and stay connected with the word of God. The power that performs miracle is not in any man. May I say that again? It shocks you. The power that performs miracle is not in any man. It's in obeying the word of God. You see, the man of God as his time, I believe it, because there's a lot of miracle that has happened in our ministry. So don't misunderstand me. As you believe the word of God, you are not the miracle worker. What did I say? I am not the miracle worker. It's my depth, my extent, my depth in the word of God. How deep I am in the word of God. And I believe for science, I believe for God that I begin to speak the word of God. If it's any other thing, then that's not the power of God. As I speak the word of God, then people believe it. As I speak the word of God, you believe it. As the word is coming, if I'm saying now, I'm saying, I'm saying, receive your healing. You are able to receive it because I am speaking under the anointing of the most high God. I have spoken the word. It's for you to grab it. It's for you to hold on to it and say, my pastor said, when my pastor was preaching, my pastor said this, and you are holding on to that word. Then there will be performance of the word of God. And you are acting according to the word that you have received. Then there is bound to be miracle. Every day now. I'm receiving testimony from the people of God. Every day, difficult uh, situation, healing is taking place. Not that, you know, we are in lockdown, but the power of God is still moving. Am I talking? The power of God is still moving. As you put your faith in the word of God that you hear, there will be performance of the word of God. Mary said, let it be unto me according to your word. Let it be unto me. I want us to grow in faith. What did I say? I want you to grow in faith. I want every one of us on this platform to grow in faith. I want us to begin to take the word of God, begin to eat it, take the word of God on a daily basis, stand on the word of God. Dear God, what did I say? Dear God, I'm saying it again. Dear God, and see what God is going to do in your life. Shout hallelujah. Okay, let's look at the book of John 11 and verse 40 quickly. John 11 and verse 40 says, If thou wilt believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. This is Jesus himself speaking here. If thou wilt believe, you will see the glory of God. I am saying to you, as many of you that are watching me again tonight, if you will believe the word of God that I'm saying, you will see the glory of God. You will see the glory of God. God does not have favorites. Some people will say, ah, hey, God favored this person. And hey, maybe because it's close to Pastor Adesonia. Hey, these people are receiving miracles. Ah, that, no, no, no. God does not have favorites. Every one of us, we are a child of God. Every one of us, we are a child of God. I say this every time. What he do to one, he will do to another. That's what the word of God says. He said, it's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So God does not have any favorite. When you hold on to the word of God, and every time you are, lowering, you are laying your hands on your womb, and you are saying, none shall be barren. 
the word of God says, none shall be barren. None shall be barren. Do you know that God has a way of opening your womb and you believe the word of God, you believe the word of prophet as it's coming out. And the day that was we come out, that someone is pregnant today, you hold on to that word. You see it that is your home and you are acting on it and you are committed to that word and you are doing everything possible. Uh, I tell you, no devil can stop you from receiving your answer. Praise the Lord. Mary and Martha looked at the situation as too late. When Jesus says, if thou believe, thou will see the glory of God. They looked at the situation and it's like, you came too late. It is too late. And I want to believe that with, they, said, they said it with attitude. That, why are you here? You shouldn't have come in the first place. Because we have been expecting you the first day. We have been expecting you the second day. We have been expecting you. It's not third day. Hey, that's why they said, it's not even smelly. That is, it's too late. There's nothing you can do about this situation. But Jesus said to Mary and Martha, he said, hey, listen, if thou will believe, thou will see the glory of God. And I'm saying to everyone that is watching me tonight, if you will believe, you will see the glory of God. What did I say? Every situation in your life that looks as if it's too late, if you believe, and you hold on to the word of God, you will see the glory of God. As Jesus spoke, I want to believe that their faith was lifted, but there is still a term of doubt. What did I say? Their faith was lifted, but what? There is still an atom of doubt. There is still an atom of doubt that says, ah, this one that is saying, How, are we really, uh, do we really, or do we really, they will be saying that. And hopefully, maybe they will just be laughing. I said, what, 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 why is he here? What's he going to do now? It is too late. Mary and Martha looked at the situation as too late. What are the situation in your life that you look at and it looks as if it's too late? What is the situation that you're about to do what? You're about to throw away. You're about to say, okay, I'm giving up. You're about to say, no, there's no life again. You're about to say, there's no hope again. What is that situation in your life? Remember, I always say this, that we, all, we quickly switch off the life supporting machine in situations of life. So every situation of life, there is a life supporting machine. It's like, it's waiting for you to, you know, release your faith, for you to release your faith, for you to ask, for you to trust, for you to obey. And you are what? You are about to give up. You just say, well, I can't be bothered. Let it go. Let it go. How many things that you have let go like that? And God is saying, no, those things will have received life. If you held on to him enough, if you held on to him enough, if you were trusting him for it to, if you are trusting him enough, if you believe all things are possible to those that believe, not only that, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. You will see the glory of God. And truly, they saw Mary and Martha, and not just Mary and Martha, everyone that surrounded Jesus at the scene. If why I want to believe when he was saying, Father, I thank you because you hear me. I want to, I want to believe that there will be among the sad to see and the far to see. That's what I call them, the sad to see and the far to see. I want to believe while he was saying, Father, I want to thank you because you always hear me. Some people will just be laughing. Some people will turn their back. Some people will maybe walk away and say, who did he think he is? What is he, who is he talking to? Uh, is it better than us that are here? Well, who is his father that he's communicating with? But Jesus does not mind the people. He was just looking at the author and the finisher of the faith. It's the same thing. You see, when you look at God, you don't have to take your eyes away from God and be looking at people that is looking at you. It's not your business, people that is looking at you. It is not possible for you at the same time to be looking at man and to be looking at God. You know, a lot of time, our problem is this. We are busy looking at people. What are people going to say? We are not looking into the word of God. If we will spend our time on a daily basis looking at what the word of God says, do you know that same word will be the one to defend you? That same word will be the one to give you victory. That same word will be the one to turn your situation around. And people will come and see what your God can do. Shout hallelujah. They both saw the glory of God. And everybody that surrounded them, they saw the glory of God. 
And from that point, you were able to conclude that there is nothing that is too late. So don't look at your situation and say it's too late. Don't look at what you are going through and say it's too late. It is not too late. Hold on to faith. Hold on to the word of God. Make sure you are holding on to the word of God. The time that you waste in crying, use it to hold on to the word of God. Hold on to the word of God. If you hear today, I say, expect the parcel. Begin to look at your what? Look at your, look at your email. Look at whatever you can look at. And I tell you, finally, we come. When I'm expecting money, I don't know where it's coming. I begin to look at my account because I know it's coming. I don't know where it's coming from. I trust God. And once I've asked, all I need to do is go and look at my account because I know it will be there. Exactly what I asked for, it will come. And at times God will decide to put extra. Am I talking to somebody? Not only in the area of money, when I'm expecting good news, I begin to look forward to it. I begin to look up forward to it because the Bible says the expectations of the righteous cannot be cast I cannot be cast down. And what, what, what do I do? I begin to expect. I begin to expect. I begin to expect. I put my heart ah, because I know the expectation of the righteous cannot be cut short. So I begin to look and I'm expecting and I'm expecting. Then finally, the good news will come. I pray for everyone that is hearing me today, whatever you have been expecting, whatever that you have been longing for, by the power of the blood and the name of Jesus, the God that called me will visit you in the name of Jesus. I say, my God will visit you. You didn't hear me? I say, my God, I know I'm serving a God. I said that God will, will visit you wherever you are tonight in the name of Jesus. He will touch those things that look as if they are dead in your life and it will bring life to it. Only believe this word. This is the point that you need to believe now. This is the point that you need to hold on to that word. When a man or woman of God is preaching, don't just take it as word. Don't use that time to do other things. Hold on to the word of God. What did I say? Hold on to the word of God because as the word is coming, you will receive your home. And as you are receiving it, you are holding on to it. You are saying, this is what that woman of God says. This is what that man of God says. And many times, this is what you are waiting for. You are waiting for somebody to prophesy and that is why the world has missed it the world today has missed it all they are waiting for is prophecy as i'm speaking right now do you know i'm prophesying as i'm speaking right now do you know i'm speaking the mind of god all you need to do as a child of god hold on to your hope what did i say hold on to your hope and hold on to which time and keep repeating it, repeating it, repeating it, then your life will be filled with signs. Your life will be filled with miracle. Somebody shout hallelujah. Let's look at the book of Timothy. I love to do the study of the word of God because one of the things that the Lord has said to me from the time of my calling, he said, the world, one thing is missing is the world. World is missing. People just want to say some things, and that's it. And we begin to pray. Something that we are praying is not scriptural. And at the end of the day, if there's no answer, you begin to blame the pastor. You don't have to blame the pastor. You also need to search the scripture. Shout hallelujah. First Timothy 4 and 13. He said, until I come, devote yourself to public reading of the scripture, to exhortation, to teaching. This is Paul speaking to Timothy. He said, until I come, devote yourself to what? To reading. To read it, to read it, we need to devote our time. We need to devote our time to reading the word of God, to reading the scripture. Find time to study. Find time to read the word of God. What did I say? Find time to read the word of God. It may be one hour that you want to de dedicate to the word of God. It may be one and a half hours that you want to dedicate to the word of God. But I'm encouraging you from today, find time for the word of God. Don't, don't get too busy where you can't search the, the scripture. And thank God from January, we'll be doing a study on the word of God from the book of Genesis. We will be going gradually. You know, this, um, this afternoon, I was just praying. I was in the place of prayer. And the Lord said to me, he said, daughter, don't be in a hurry teaching my children. And I look around and I say, Father, what, what is that? He said, don't be in a hurry. He said, keep repeating yourself until they are able to catch it. He said, some of them are slow to hear. Don't rush. He said, there are sermons that I give to you. Repeat it as many times as possible so that they will get what you are saying and what the word of God is saying concerning them. He said, don't rush. So I said, okay. 
It said you, you make title your message, one, two, three, four, five, six. It said gradually, you begin to grab the word. Says, Don't be in a hurry. And I want to tell you, I'm not going to be in a hurry. We're going to go slowly until we are able to catch those words. And those words become what? Part of your life. Find time to study. Read the word of God. Read at least 10 chapters of the Bible daily. If I may ask you, when last did you read your Bible? Believers, when last did you read your Bible? Some people don't read the Bible. It's only when you want to preach, when you want to teach. That's when you read your Bible. If you're a Sunday school teacher, you only read your Bible when you are what? When you are teaching. You'll be looking, you'll look after that, you put it aside. You are not a child of God. You cannot be a child of God and not find time for the word of God. Every one of us, I'm not talking to you alone, I'm talking to myself again uh, as well, because we need to find time for study. It is in studying the word of God that we develop. It is in studying the word of God that we can obey the word of God. It's in studying the word of God that we get to the place of maturity. Maturity is not something that happens overnight. It's not something that happens overnight. It's our gradual walk with God as we walk with God. When we say walking with God, it's reading the word of God and praying daily. Praise the Lord. Read at least 10 chapters from today. Start from wherever you want to start. You can start five chapter from New Testament and go five chapter, five chapter, uh, five chapter the whole Testament. Sorry, as you devote yourself to reading, reading the Word of God, it enhances your growth. It will enhance my growth. I'll begin to grow. I'll begin to grow. And the more you grow in the things of God, the more you'll be spiritual minded. A lot of believers are kind of minded. What did I say? A lot of believers, they are carnal minded. The more you devote your time to the scripture, the more you'll be what? You'll be spiritual minded. Don't take the Bible reading as a novel that you just read and you don't gain anything. It's a spiritual book and it needs the Holy Spirit to help you when it comes to reading of the Bible. And this is what you need to do as a child of God. When you want to read the Bible, just sit down and say, God, help me. I don't know what to read. I need you to help me. As I'm reading, help me to understand what I'm reading. Hear this. The Holy Spirit is the one that wrote the Bible. And for you to have an understanding, it's like books that are written. When you are asking me something about the book, I will tell you because why? I am the author of the book. It's the same thing. The Holy Spirit is the author of the Bible. What did I say? The Holy Spirit is the author of the Bible. And when you ask the Holy Spirit to assist you in your reading, is very easy. Praise the Lord. We can, we, you can, you can only have access to spiritual things with spiritual eyes. What did I say? You can only have access to spiritual things with spiritual eyes. So without spiritual eyes, you won't have access to it. You'll be reading it, and it's just like the eunuch, the utopian eunuch. You say you don't understand what you are reading. Somebody shout hallelujah. Let's look at this take me to my next um scripture, and I'm going to be rounding up quickly tonight so that we can have the time to pray. Psalm 119 and verse 18 says, open thou my eyes, my eyes, my eyes, because it's not all eyes that is open that sees. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He said, this is David speaking. He said, open thou my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of the law, out of the law. The, the law here that, uh, that David, Moses, uh, David is referring to is the scripture. He said, open my eyes. Our eyes must be open to behold the wondrous things that is written in the scripture. There are wondrous things that we do not know. It's right in the scripture. It's right in the scripture. Your understanding of the depth of the word of God is what strengthens your faith. Uh -huh. Your understanding, my understanding of the depth of the word of God is what does what? It strengthens my faith. It strengthens my faith. The more I understand what I'm reading, the more my faith grows. The more I understand what I'm reading, the more my faith does what? My faith grow. The Bible makes us to understand that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Without the word of God, our faith cannot be developed. What did I say? 
the, without the word of God, my faith cannot be developed. It's when I begin to read the word of God and I understand, I, the more I'm understanding the word, I am going down, 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 down. When I say down, down, my life is taking roots. My life is taking root. And after a while, I'm established and begin to bring forth fruit. I begin to bring forth fruit. I begin to bring forth fruit. And no man, no doctrine, nothing that happens in the planet I that will be able to uproot you from God because you are established in the word of God. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. The word begins to strengthen you. And it's, as it's strengthening you, your faith begins to develop. Your faith begins to develop. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this is why when Job was going through his problem, what did he say in the book of Job 19 and verse 25? What did he say? You know, I know my, my redeemer leave it. That was all he could say. He wasn't crying. He wasn't worried with what everybody around him was saying. He said, I know my redeemer leave it. One thing I know, I am not alone in this. That's what brother Job was saying in the book of Job 19 and verse 25. So he was so, you know, he was so confident. That's what I'm talking about. You are so confident in the word of God because you are growing, you are growing, you are growing, you are taking root in the word of God. As you understand the word of God, you are taking root, you are taking root, and you are able to stand the storms of life. So no matter any storms that comes your way, you'll be able to say, I know my Redeemer lives. I know it's not a problem. I know God is with me. I know I am not alone. Hallelujah. Do you see that, that again, David was able to say something similar in the book of Psalm 121 and verse 4. He said, he that watches over Israel does not sleep nor slumber. Hallelujah. He that watches over Israel does not do what? Does not sleep and is not slumber. So I am not afraid. Uh -huh. So you can go to sleep. What did I say? You can go to sleep. Even when the enemy is making noise, you and I can go to sleep because you know Psalm 121 verse 4 is for you. I know God does not sleep. Hey, he that watches over Tinuke does not sleep nor slumber. He that watches over Tinuke does not sleep nor slumber. So you are not just saying it. You believe what you are saying. You believe your confession and you are acting it. To the point that the devil just go and look for jobs somewhere else. Hallelujah. He knew that he cannot be forsaken. So David said, he that watch over Israel does not sleep and he does not slumber. But listen to me. You can be saying it and you are still shaking. You can be shaking, saying it and you are still afraid. But when you, you know, you have grown in the depth of the word of God. Even when you are saying it and people are, hey, how are you going to do this? You say, what is it? There is, there is no problem. They will be shocked and they'll go and sit down. Shout hallelujah. Job spoke with great confidence based on his depth of knowledge and understanding of who God is. I'll go back again. Job spoke, uh, spoke with great confidence. Great, great confidence. He believed, he believed based on his depth of knowledge and understanding of who God is. Hallelujah. I know my Redeemer live it. So it's not just a word of mouth. It's holding on. You have people like that. God will fight for you. You yourself, you'll be begging God. Has somebody was, was telling me that was yesterday and he was narrating how God fought for her. Me, myself, I'm just doing ha, ha, ha. Because it's too much what God did. It's too much. The way God fought a battle. When she was saying it, I stood there. For three days now, we have been spoke, we speaking on that same testimony. I will, I, I will call her again and we say, are, are you sure? You will say, yes. Then she will start again. God is going to do the same for you. God is going to do the same for you. You see, this is what the scripture says. It says, weeping may endure for a time. But the time and the season of joy, the time of the season of joy make you to forget what you have lost. The time and the season of joy make you stand still, Gidiba, as a child of God. You won't find that in the dictionary, so don't go look for it. The time and the season of God in your life, 
I pray for you tonight. May today be the time and season of testimony. What you thought is gone. What you thought you have lost. What you thought is unrepairable. What you thought you cannot get again. May you get it back this week. Yes, I know this week remains two days. I said this week. I said this week. I said this week. In the name of Jesus, may this year not go past without you receiving your great testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. May this year not go past without you receiving that surprise parcel. May this year not go past. Rabba, send the Rimakunte. I said, may this year not go past without God opening those doors that needs to open in your life. May this year not go past be good up ascending without God shutting the mouth of the lion and proving that it's your God. May this year not go past. Hey, Makota Libra without God taking that clothes from your life and giving you a new garment, a garment of praise, a garment of favor, a garment of lifting in the name of Jesus. May this season not pass by without you singing songs of joy. May this year not go past without you sharing your testimony in the name of Jesus. May this year not go past without your head being lifted above every stumble, above every trouble, above every calamity. May this year not go past without God wiping away your tears. May this year not go past. May this year not go past when you will come out and you will shout for joy. May that be your testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. May God show you his exceeding grace in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me, let me, let me close with this. Tonight, I'm just going to prophesy to your life. There's no prayer point. I'm going to prophesy to your life. So get ready to receive from God tonight. Am I talking to you? I said, get ready tonight to receive. Let your heart be open. Let your heart be open. Hallelujah. Job 13 and verse 15. And I round up with that tonight. Job, this same Job. This same Job. He said, though is lame. This is a man that has gone through a lot. A lot has happened in his life. So he's gotten to a level in his life that he just, you know, with relax, with joy. He's just speaking and bragging about God. I say, may you brag about God. I pray for you. You will brag about your God. You will brag about your God. You will brag about your God. People will look at you and you will tell them, God did this in my life. He lift me up. He changed my story. He changed my comment. He removed reproach from my life. He removed shame from my life. He paid all my debt. I didn't know that you will favor me this way. May this be your song of testimony in this very year, in the mighty name of Jesus. May God by himself lift you up, shoot you up, and show you to your world that is still God. Did I, hear, did I hear you say amen? I said, may God lift you up and show you to your world that is God. I said, may God lift you up in the merry clay that you have been for years, for months, for weeks, and you have been there. Ha -ha, and you have been discouraged. You thought you were not going to come out, but suddenly, the God of suddenly visit your womb. The God of suddenly visit your son. The God of suddenly visit your daughter. The God of suddenly, Ma Kuria Basende, destroy those shackles and chain. The God of suddenly, Ma Kuria Basende, replace any part of your body that they say is no longer for functioning. The God of suddenly, Ma Kuria Basende, bring your husband from far that he will locate you. The God of suddenly open doors of business for you at this time. The God of suddenly even in this season when people are talking about casting down, may you be lifted up. I say may you be lifted up. I say may you be lifted up. Run about in the name of Jesus. People that thought they have stopped you. People that thought you cannot change. People that thought nothing can happen in your life again. May they hear about your testimony and bow to your God. Bow to your God. Bow to your God. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy into your life. It's a new season. Ha ha. I say it's a new season. Ha ha. I say it's a new season. Though it looks as if he has slain you many times. It looks as if you cannot get 
get up again. It looks as if ha, there is no hope for you again. But according to the book of Job 13 and verse 15, he said, Don't he slay me. I will have hope in him. Yet will I argue my waist in his face. I speak over your life today by the power of the blood and the name of Jesus. Heaven will, de- heaven will begin to decide your case. Makarabasokoya concerning that job. Heaven will decide your case. Heaven will decide your case. It will turn it around to your favor. It will turn things around for your favor. For your favor, for your favor, for your favor, for your favor, for your favor. The money you least expected will come into your account. In the name of Jesus, people will want to do business with you. So shall it be. In the mighty name of Jesus, the Lord will mark you from tonight for success. The Lord will mark you from tonight for goodness. The Lord will mark you from tonight for lifting. The Lord will mark you from tonight for miracle. The Lord will mark you from tonight. Hey, for exceeding grace of God in the name of Jesus. You have been bent over for a long time. I speak over your life. I speak over your life. That same grace that came upon that woman that has been bent over for 18 years. Maruda Karuskelia, today in the name of Jesus, that grace will pick you up. That grace will lift you up. That grace will lift you up in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, the man by the pool of Bethsaida, there was nobody to help. He took Jesus to come to his assistant. He went directly to where he was. He went to his location. Can I pray for somebody under the sound of my voice? Grace will locate you. Hey, I say grace will locate you. Among many, among thousands that they are about to decide their case. Makarusika librade. Kanimokoto librade. Grace will locate you. I say 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 grace will locate you. Right where he was seated. The grace of God located this man and this man haha, that have been sitting in the same position. I don't know how long you have been in your position. I don't know how long you have been stand still. I don't know how long you have been sitting still in, sitting still in the same position. But tonight, I said tonight, that, that, that email that you have been expecting, that letter of good news that you have been expecting, will burst open the door for you to receive good news, to receive good news, to receive good news, to receive good news. Everywhere you turn to, it shall be good news. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. You will no longer labor in vain. You won't labor in vain. Money to, that you are paid to lawyer, paid to lawyer, paid to lawyer, and there's no result. This time around, receive your result. Receive your result. Receive, receive your result. Because it's your time of lifting. And when the time of lifting comes, that Jehovah God wants to lift you up, he does not consult with any man. So I speak as the voice of the living God. From tonight, you are lifted. From tonight, you are lifted. From tonight, you are lifted. Every pain from your head to the sole of your feet. I speak healing in the name of Jesus. I speak healing in the name of Jesus. There are nights like this uh, that God visited the pool of Bethsaida. I said tonight in the name of Jesus, as God is visiting the people of God in their home, may you experience the visitation of God tonight in the name of Jesus. Tonight in the name of Jesus. Tonight in the name of Jesus, you will go far. Nothing will stop you. You are unstoppable. No power from the gate of hell will be able to stop you again. No power from your father's side, your mother's side, territorial power, nationally, will be able to stop you again. In the name of Jesus, what is what you have done that you have, it does not bring any relevance to your life. From today, you'll be relevant. In the name of Jesus, among your equals, the Lord will shoot you up. In the name of Jesus, I speak to you today. You will no longer experience with that hand in the name of Jesus. Help will locate you. I speak by the power and the grace of the Most High God. Help will locate you. People that you do not know, they'll begin to fight for you. People that you do not know, they'll begin to help you. People that you do not know, they will assist you, assist your children, 
take note of this word because it will come to pass. In the name of Jesus, you will not die young. You will not die on timely death. Nothing will be able to kill you. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, everlasting Father. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we exalt you. The Egyptian you see today, you will see them no more. I said, the Egyptian you see today, you will see them no more. In the name of Jesus, I release the power and the blood of Jesus upon you and your household. In the remaining days of the year 2020, the gate of Hades will not swallow you. They will not swallow your children. They will not swallow your spouse. In the name of Jesus, you will not lose anything in the remaining of this year. You will not lose anything in the remaining of this year, the fulfillment of prophecies that you have received and you have waited and waited and waited and you are tired, you are tired, you are tired, your time has come. What did I say? Your time has come. Your time has come. Your time has come for you to receive that visa. Your time has come for you to receive that promotion. Your time has come for you to receive that joy. Your time has come for you to marry. It's a new season for you. It's a new day in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. You go from one level of glory to another level of glory. From one level of grace to another level of grace. From one level of blessing to another level of blessing. So shall it be. In the name of Jesus, as I speak tonight, the Lord will open the book of remembrance for you as the book of remembrance was opened for Mordecai. Nay, Masukali Brade, tonight, by the power of the blood of Jesus, everyone that is King Asuerus in your life that needs to open the book of remembrance for your sake tonight, they will not sink, they will not sleep, they will will not sleep. They will not sleep. The book of remembrance by your manager, by your supervisor, in the name of Jesus, by, by people in authority, immigration, the book of remembrance will be open for you. In the name of Jesus, it will lead to your testimony. Father, we give you praise. Somebody, wherever you are, just begin to give him praise tonight. Begin to give him praise tonight. Give him to give him praise tonight. Somebody, join me and give him praise tonight. Exalt his name. Exalt his name. It's a miracle working God. It's a miracle working God. Let's exalt his name. Let's exalt his name. Let's adore him this evening. Just go ahead and worship him. If you know that those blessings, you are part of the partakers of the blessing. Go ahead, worship him tonight. Go ahead, exalt him. Him tonight. Go ahead, glorify him tonight. Go ahead and throne him tonight. Let's give him praise. You deserve all the glory. You deserve all the honor. You deserve adoration. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you praise in the beauty of your holiness. Thank you for what you have done. Thank you for what you will do. Thank you for this testimony. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, between now and the next power of prayer. Your people will come running with their testimony to testify to the goodness of God. In the name of Jesus, I open that womb this same month. In the name of Jesus, we not pass without you conceiving. In the name of Jesus, your case is settled. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you praise. You will connect with the bone of your bone. It shall be a time of testimony money and joy for the people of God tonight. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. 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 Expect your testimony 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours. I want you to expect your miracle because you will be part of the people that will call me and will testify to the goodness of God. The pool of Bethsaida. Remember that pool again this evening? God has troubled the waters, has troubled the troubles of your life in order for you to be a partaker of this testimony. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever the Lord has laid again in your heart tonight, you want to sow it as a seed in receiving the word of God. You want to give tonight. You just want to give your best tonight. And as you give, the Lord will begin to honor those things that you give to us. And he will bring it to pass in the name of Jesus. It will not fall to the ground. It will bring forth fruits and harvest for you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want you to know that we love you. We love you and we hope to see you online on Sunday.
keep relaxing, keep bouncing in the Lord, and see you tomorrow morning in that presence. Make sure you invite at least two persons to join us. The more we are, the more we'll be able to stand against the gate of pages, and it will not prevail over us in the name of Jesus. Until I come your way again, I want you to know that I love you. Keep sharing this message. Keep sharing the love of God. It is well with you. God bless you.